Look, I don't know if you're a fan of like anime or, car, you know, or uh, manga or any of these other type of shows that you might see over in the East that are extremely popular. Or you could quite frankly say, you know, shows like Squid Games and, and shows that are very popular and created in other languages that end up getting created for the West. This involves a process called localizing. This has been going on the other direction for many years where the United States actually used to make good entertainment and then it would get sent out to other countries and uh, they would have local people there revoice it and you know use their slang so it would make more sense. It's like the the dubs, it's why subs are always superior to dubs because dubs, they always put their own like spin on it and oftentimes you lose the meaning. Well, we now have a big, for years, by the way, these localizers, these people who have nothing to do with the original product, but want to put their own imprint on it. They've been ruining shows for a very long time by wokeifying them, um, changing things without being asked to, and people have been calling it out. One of the biggest dorks that does this is someone called Jamie Marchi, okay? Former Funimation scriptwriter Jamie Marchi doubles down on her infamous anti-patriarchy localization of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. This is what happens when a script is dubbed into a different language. So as a guest, again, so you have a show that people love, in this particular case, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon's Maid, or it might be whatever it is that you might be into for anime. Um, but it's some local loser who's like, well, actually, let's make sure we make this all SJW. Uh, let's make sure um, we put some Yes Slay Queen in it. The thing is, in the East, there's the reason there's a huge push at like South Korean, Korean cinema, South Korean cinema, stuff from the East right now is because it's not full of woke crap. As a discourse against Western localization industry, again, this is just adapting for a modern audience, stuff that's already beloved, so there's no need for it. Former Funimation scriptwriter Jamie Marchi has kicked off her new year by doubling down on her intentional and now infamous botching of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid's English language dub. The latest round of localizer discourse arose when, after Bushi Road's works announced that in order to circumvent piracy, it would begin using a hybrid of AI technology and human editors to provide in-house English simul pubs, I assume maybe that means dubs, for their manga series, The Ancient Magus Bride, which I'm guessing means no more work for uh, voice actors, mid-tier voice actors uh, in the West. Following an announcement, some fans admitted that while not ideal, the use of AI would potentially allow them to receive more accurate translations of their favorite works. However, Western localizers took the news as an insult. Many of them ironically upset that their work, which is often riddled with socio-political screds and tired memes, was not being respected. So again, just so you understand. Whoa! I need to scroll down so you actually listen to me here. For years, these people who have nothing to do with the creation of anything have put their spin on it, which just involves cramming leftist ideology into it. That's just how it actually is. All the people that do this are leftoids and they cram it into there and it's immersion breaking and garbage. As with every such round of localization discourse, the battle over the West's handling of Japanese work led to the aforementioned controversial dub of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. As per the course with every localization discourse, the controversial uh, otherwise known as the defining moment of the entire botched Japanese to English localization phenomenon, phenomenon was put back into light. The moment in question occurs in the 12th episode of the series' first season uh, and is based on the scene in the likewise numbered caption, uh, the original manga where the good-natured and well-endowed former Aztec dragon goddess, uh, better known as Lukoa, makes a conscious decision to cover up her voluptuous body following comments towards the fact made by the aforementioned Tauru. I don't know. I probably screwed up both of those names. For a fan translation of the manga, after taking this comment to heart, she attempts to cover herself up with a sweater, informing a friend um, during a later surprise visit, look at these clothes. I made sure to tone down the body exposure. Okay. Um, taking a note 
of the Aztec Dragon God's Impossible to Hide bust, an unimpressed person responds to the change requesting, it would be nice if you could change the body next time. Oh, because she's got gigantic bazongas. Even though the notorious Seven Seas, who recent manga and localizations have been among the most controversial across the entire medium, kept the playful spirit of Dragon's interactions in their version of the story. Um, I don't really care what the main problem is here. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but then you end up a situation where she changed it to make it her own. The English dub, Marchi used her former role as Funimation scriptwriter. Her filmography does not list any script credits past her work on Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid to replace the original story with her own flavor and feminist virtue signaling. Here, she asks why she changed her outfit, and she asserts, oh, those pesky patriarchal societal demands were getting on my nerves, so I changed the clothes. Wow, that's so cool. Well, of course, Jamie Marchi. Then, woke localizer scandal. He's up. Jamie Marchi wants to cancel Asmongold over criticism. You see, putting on reading glasses and holding up a spiral notebook, Marchi began imitating Asmongold's response to a previous allegation word for word with added snark. Who gives an S? Okay. Asmongold found himself thrust in the longtime war of anime fans versus woke localizers when he stumbled upon a YouTube video by anime commentator Rev Says Deisu. When his chat explained the issue of localizers rewriting stories, he remarked, well, then they're not localizers. They're just liars, right? I mean, it's not your job to rewrite the story, which I 100% agree. Rev briefly highlighted the changes to Miss Kobayashi's Dragon, uh, Dragon Maid dialogue, initially doubtful of the stark contrast between the original Japanese and the English script. Asmongol was stunned after listening to the English version. He began to tear into it. This is so outrageous. It's like I refuse to effing believe it, but it's right here in front of me. There it is. Asmongol then critical, criticizes localizers for trying to abuse their position to do something they're not being paid to do, which is what I think most people agree. While watching the 2018 video panel, he replied, how do you do something like this and not think you're an effing idiot? It actively makes everything else she does, even retroactively suspect. It makes everybody think, wait, so if they were able to change the meaning of this, then what about all the other stuff she worked on? Is that the same thing? When Marchi compared her critics to Nazi Germany, Asmongold couldn't believe it. It's so insane to me. You're compa comparing changing an effing Coomer anime to Nazis. This is a 46-year-old, and she's acting like she's four to six years old. It's sad. The thing is, obviously, she's bothered by it, and it's okay that she's bothered by it. I think it would make sense that she's bothered by it. Naturally, you would be. Why can't we just have a conversation about whether this is good or not? Why does it have to be so personal? So, of course, she then immediately plays the victim. Yes, a dude with over 2 million followers makes me a target to those followers. He then made a video mocking the harassment he caused. That's totally reasonable to you because I might be insufferable. Was he not allowed to talk about things? This is like, this is the, the standard, like, censorious. I mean, just so to bring it back to, like, so you guys understand what I'm talking about. This is censorship. This is Western weirdos forcing their own political ideology in almost every single case. It is far leftist leaning crap in almost every single scenario. Forcing it on art that they don't own, that they didn't create, and they're just injecting it. Their job is to make sure that us who people who don't speak Japanese understand what that what they're saying and what they're meaning. The original comic mentioned nothing about the patriarchy. They they can't create anything. So then she puts out this video and like, you know, my response to some of Asmongol's followers. This was just a few days receiving ago. regarding his involvement with soft giving and their controversy. I thought it's only fair that I respond to his followers in kind. Well, who gives a shit? Somebody makes an allegation against me and now somehow I have to respond to it? No, I don't have to say anything. Who gives a fuck? Thank you for your time. 
Ah, another another perfect example for creating absolutely nothing. That was her big response. That was her big response. It's not her job, okay? It's not her job to change the story and force like SJW politics into it. She th hilariously says she doesn't have to respond to anything, but she absolutely is responding to it and she's having a melty about it. Don't, you know, this is why all this stuff, I mean, this is what the original clip was that started like th that, that shows where her head's at. It's a stroll of power, and I appreciate it. Well, uh, I'm kind of scared to ask this question now because I don't want to bring them in the room. Um, uh -oh, so okay. this is more directed at Jamie, but all of you can answer. Go, Jamie, all of you go. I'm excited like, uh, about it. I'm ready to bring down the room. Let's do we it. We need a spotlight. Um, so I'm Funimation Jamie. has come under, let's call it, criticism oh, for criticism. how they choose to adapt their scripts oh, for like a couple of shows. Oh, like unnecessary hate. Yeah, got it. Yeah, um, and a lot of that, I feel, is directed at you unfairly. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> So how, how would you like to respond to that kind of criticism? To the criticism? Like, I have a vagina. Deal with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. All your criticisms are totally just because I'm a woman. I'm right because I have a vagina. That's who this person is. So, yeah, I'm not going to really take anything they say seriously. I mean, she was caught changing original content, and then she just blames it on, you know, sexism because that's her only card to play. I can't wait till these losers are out of work. Literally.